as we continue to enjoy the fall and celebrate God's presence with us. And so we gather to worship. And on this Sunday, we have the pleasure of having six young people receive communion for the first time. So we give thanks for their participation in the class and making our bread for our service today. Um, and I think you'll get to see a video of that when, during the taking of communion today, the receiving of it. You have quite a few announcements uh, in, in your bulletin. And um, you'll notice that next Sunday is also All Saints and we have the service of remembrance later in the morning. Um, and then underneath that, you have a reminder that the Prairie Arts Chorale will next Saturday be performing here. And if you check the kiosk in the um, entry area, you'll see that the, if you can't make it here on Saturday, there are a couple of other places they will be performing as well. Um, and you also should check that out for who all has dinners where coming up. Um, you'll notice there are quite a few committees that are going to be meeting this week, so if you are on those committees, make sure you make, get that on your calendar. And um, if you aren't on any committees, you ought to consider what committees would you like to participate in. Um, next Saturday is the Equipping Congregations Gathering in Marshall. They're doing a road show this year. So there are a couple of other locations, but Marshall was the one that looked like the easiest and best for most of us. There's a sign-up sheet for that. Um, we do need to let them know how many of us are coming and we can figure out carpooling and those kind of things. Uh, and then you have a lot of other things coming up. Holiday season musical, um, noisy offering, thank offering service for Roca, and it's already time to start thinking about poinsettias for Christmas. Um, Thanksgiving Eve, the Congregation Yellow Medicine Lutheran um, is having a Thanksgiving Eve service and they have a catered dinner before that. So if you would be interested in the dinner, sign up and um, you can find more information in the Narthex or in your newsletter on that. Um, the other thing that I have on my notes is to remind you to set your clocks back next week. Um, so that you're on time for church. But we have our survey going on that we are doing with Dialogue Works, and Joe would like to talk a little bit more about that. You, good morning. Um, just want to share an update with you on our committee that's working with Dialogue Works. Um, Remember, if you've missed the past couple weeks, the council assembled a group of six of us from the congregation um, to work with uh, Peter Soli and Rachel Kepke as we prepared to call new pastors. Um, the committee said they would give me donuts if I did this talk today, so I'm expecting those at some point. So, um, Just an update, morale is high in our group. I think we're kind of enjoying the process. It feels like we're doing something productive for the church, which is good. Just a reminder, they're doing a questionnaire. So questionnaires are due today. This questionnaire has been out for about two weeks. Um, if you have an email on account with the church, you were sent an email, I think on October 17th, with a link to the survey. Um, if you don't have an email or don't do that, we have paper questionnaires as well. Um, we have them on the back table. In the back, you can fill those out this morning if you want, or take those home, but get them in the mail tomorrow. They have to be mailed tomorrow. If you have completed paper surveys or are going to complete it here, you can just stick it in the mail slot that goes into the office um, in the vestibule back there. And what will happen with those is they'll just get stuck in a manila envelope and mailed tomorrow to Peter Soli. Um, let's see, we're getting uh, ready to have in-person discussions as well. Those are going to be November 18th through the 20th. So that's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those will occur here at church. Peter and Rachel are gonna come out for those and uh, cram a whole, as many in as they can over that weekend. Um, they're gonna be one-on-one -on -one discussions with Peter or Rachel and small group discussions of about eight to 12 people. So you can kind of think about which one you would rather participate in. 
um, and we're working to finalize a sign-up sheet for those. We're going to meet with Peter and Rachel tomorrow evening and hope to nail down those details, so keep an eye open for the sign-up sheets in church here sometime this week. Um, and sign up for a slot if you'd like to have discussions with them. Um, they're very good to talk to. We've enjoyed sitting in on the meetings that they've facilitated just among our small group too. Uh, sign up for slots. <laughs> if we don't get the slots filled, we will start calling you, pestering you to uh, come and talk to them. So uh, appreciate your cooperation on that. If you have, have any questions about this process, um, our group again is Carol Nordon, Peggy Hardy, Taylor Bachland, Janelle Sanru, Val Hoffman, and myself. And uh, I know I'll be hanging around after church for a while after Sunday school. So if you have any questions about logistics or what exactly we'll be talking about, feel free to come up and talk to me or any of our group. Thank you. I think that covers our announcements for this morning. So let us join in singing as we gather at your table 522.
Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the readings. Good morning. Our first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapters 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. For the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. And our second reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by the deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteous, righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, for all who believe. But there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded by what law? By that of the works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. And this ends the second reading. Reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and I'm going to ask our kids to come forward.
and what he read in the Bible that Jesus said was the way we were supposed to behave, and he kept scratching his head about it and going, this just doesn't seem quite right. So back in 1517, he wrote down all the rules that he thought were kind of wrong, but that the church, the big church leaders were saying were okay, and he, he wrote them all down. And he only had 95 of them. We call them the 95 pieces. But the Holy Spirit kept moving him. And one of the things we do to remind us about the Holy Spirit coming into us is we put up the red pyramids. You know, the cloth that's on the lectern and the pulpit and up on the altar? Those are red today for Reformation Sunday which we always celebrate the last Sunday in October. And Lutherans are the crazy ones who do that. But Luther posted those 95 pieces, those 95 statements of things that he was going, I just can't understand what we're saying in the church that it's okay. And, the, and Jesus says, hmm. So he wanted to have a discussion with people. People who were studying the Bible and the church leaders said, you know what? Where do you think he posted it? Do they post stuff on the bulletin board at school? And you know we've got that square thing down in the lobby, down in the entry area, that has all kinds of posters on it and stuff for us to know about? Luther posted it on the local bulletin board in his town, which was the front door of the church. So we talk about him posting the 95 theses on the door of the church to challenge what was going on in the church. And it led to all kinds of reforms in the way we do church and the way we teach church. Now, do, do you guys know what reform is? Nah, I figured you didn't. Do you ever take your Play-Doh or some clay and you mold it into something and then you decide that's not what you want so you punch it back down and you make it again, that's reforming it. So that's what happened in the church, is we stopped and said, hold it. We need to be more about what Jesus teaches. And so we started studying the Bible, and Luther translated it into the language of the people. So now we have it in English, whereas the people didn't get to read it before then. And we study it so that we stay true to what Jesus teaches us. But it also led to all kinds of different ways of doing church, different ways of understanding how to read the Bible. And we celebrate that with Reformation. And we continue to challenge ourselves in the church to make sure we stay true to what Jesus teaches us. And so when you see those red pyramids, remember that the Holy Spirit is coming. And that today, the last Sunday in October, is Reformation Sunday. But we also use it to celebrate other things like First Communion. And tomorrow, we'll go to All Hallows' Eve and remember Halloween. As we continue to study God's Word in Sunday School and, Sunday, and Children's Church, and we continue to read God's stories at home. Right? Okay, so let's pray. Can you repeat after me? Gracious God, help us stay open to your spirit. Guide us to live as you taught, not as the world tells us. Help us to learn as Martin Luther did. about your spirit in us. Amen. All right, those of you that go to Children's Church up to first grade, if you'll go find your teacher back there, the rest of you, if you'll bring your families. moment for silent prayer. Gracious God, help us to continue to be 
reformers to always look at what we are doing, challenge what we are doing, and ask, why do we do it this way? So that we can be open to how your spirit moves us to new ways and to understanding the old ways and the importance of them so that we may truly live according to your word. Amen. You know, these texts, um, all three of them really come together in re reminding us of the importance of our relationship with God. We have everything from being reminded that the law is written on our hearts to knowing the truth and being set free. But the relationship we have with God is always subject to new things. And the laws that God has placed on our hearts in that new covenant don't always pop out to us. It's only through that study of Jesus' word that we know the truth which sets us free. And then we learn that we are justified by God's grace, that we are redeemed from the law. But it is that combination of texts that make this day extra special as it relates to receiving Christ through communion. We are reminded that the laws are written on our hearts, but keeping that strong in our minds does require that ongoing relationship with Jesus through word and sacrament. And so it is that we remember our baptismal covenant, covenant to come to the Lord's table, to share in his body and blood, to continue in his word. And even as our baptism begins our faith journey, we grow in our faith and understanding of those laws on our hearts by studying God's word. And we start with the stories read to us as toddlers, and then coming and watching and hearing what goes on in church, then we expand our understanding, connecting the truth of God's word to everything in our world as we learn the stories in Sunday school. And as we are mentored, we are mentored by our teachers, we are mentored by our grandparents, we are mentored by others that we come to know. We are mentored by people that are older than us and we are mentored by people younger than us as we listen for how the spirit is moving amongst us and then that spirit moves in us to be the mentor to others. But it is those relationships that give that emphasis in our life towards God first and foremost. It is that building up of that laws in our hearts. But it is that kind of emphasis that we need. As Jesus tells us, we will know the truth by continuing in his word. And it is that truth that sets us free. But what is it to be free? Freedom always seems to come with a lot of responsibility. And we are always then free to continue in God's word. And we are blessed that we no longer have to try to understand it in Greek, Hebrew, or Latin. But Luther translated it into German and King James had it translated into English, and now we have many ways of reading the Bible. And we are free to do so. And we are free to come together, to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and to share in his supper. Those things that we continue to do to be renewed and strengthened, so that those laws that are written on our hearts continue to hold us to live with love for our neighbor, and to strive for justice in the world. We're free to build relationships with all sorts of people, which continues to provide us with mentors, with teachers, with people who challenge us, who allow us to share our love of neighbor, and especially to love those who do not know Jesus. So we continue to work at new ways of building those relationships 
with all the changes and uncertainty of the last couple of years, we keep looking at things and going, well, before then we used to do it this way. Well, is that a good way to continue to do it? Or maybe there's another way we could, or do we need to do that? We keep asking questions as we are renewed with being able to be in community. So it is that we have six young people wanting that extra special connection to Christ that comes through sharing in that mystery, that mystery that we receive in communion, where Christ is present for us in, under, and with the bread and wine. The truth of Jesus' words keeps us knowing that our faith is what sets us free, free to participate in secular world, and then to also know how important it is to connect in to the things that are of God and to keep the things of the world in their proper place after God. And so we know that coming together as church and communities of faith supports us to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God, share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. That covenant we make at baptism and when we affirm our baptism. And so it is we share in all sorts of fellowship as we continue to grow our relationship with Jesus Christ in faith, and as we share in a simple meal of bread and wine, where Jesus is in, under, and with the bread and wine, as we share in growing in community. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 767. <laughs> Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on, our, on the hearts of your people that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Guide us to wisely use your land as we complete the harvest and prepare the land for new growth. Keep our relationships with the environment concerned with protecting and using it for the next generation. Hear us, O oh God. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations where they are in an uproar. Bring wise leadership and comfort for those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O oh God. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Calm all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis, especially David, Mary, Scott, Dave, Becky, and the family of Raquel Rova. Hear us, O oh God. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Bless all who are sharing with us in your supper for the first time today. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach them your word and give them courage to proclaim their faith. Guide all of us in this time of transition to listen for your wisdom. Hear us, O oh God. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all reformers. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O oh God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. Please be seated as we share with you our offerings from God's generosity.
Let us join together in the offering prayer. Gracious God, in your great love, we richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ who sets the table for all. Amen. We're going to do things a little different today. And so, with our six young people, I'm going to ask them to stand as their names are read. Tinley Anderson, Aaron Carter, Emma Eisenberg, Decker Esbold, Ryan Martin, and Brody Sammer. And now I would ask the congregation, let us pray for these young people. Let us pray together a blessing on these students. May your first communion celebrate your friendship with Jesus as you grow in this friendship. May your words be gentle and your touch be kind. May you hear whispers of love in your heart each day. May you have fun in discovering God hidden everywhere. And may you remember to thank God often for the gift of life given for you. Amen. And now, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. With our young people and their families, we're going to do things a little different. I am going to serve the bread to the First Communion families. Um, so they're going to come up on both sides here, and I'll switch back and forth, and then they're going to go around to receive the wine um, in the individual cups. And the grape juice is there as well. And after the First Communion families have finished, the other servers will come up and we'll go to our normal Two people serving bread and four people serving wine so that you can go on either side of the table. Come, all is ready. If you do not take communion, please put your hands on your chest and we will be happy to give you a blessing. Come, all is ready.
thank you kids for participating and for making the bread for us. And thank you for joining us in sharing this mystery. Let us join in singing, let the Lord dismiss us with your blessings.